So after editing hundreds of videos for my own channel and my clients channels as well and getting hundreds of thousands of subscribers and tens of millions of views on YouTube, I have been able to boil down my entire editing formula and process into 10 simple steps that you can follow as well as a complete beginner. Now, I remember when I was making my first YouTube videos, it was a very stressful and painful experience because I had zero clue about what the process is that I should actually follow, how to use the certain editing softwares and so on. So I really hope that this video is going to be able to give you some guidance that you need to be able to turn your raw file that you have just recorded into a ready to publish masterpiece that's going to get you thousands of views and subscribers and all the success that you crave. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the first step of editing your YouTube video. So step number one is organization. So what you want to do after you got your raw files from your camera or your phone is to actually create a folder on your computer. I usually like to name it the name of the video and also uh, the date that it was recorded on. And then within that folder, you want to create more subfolders which are going to contain all your files. This is important so that if you ever need to access the project again, you will have all your files in one place. And it's just a very good habit as well to stay organized. Then step number two is to actually start a new project with the right uh, settings. So you want to make sure that the project settings actually match what you have shot your video in. So uh, whether it was done on your you know, phone or on your camera, just make sure that your project settings are actually going to be matching ideally both the resolution and also the frame rate of whatever you have used to record the video. And then once you have done that, you can actually go ahead and import all your files into your editing software so that they are ready to be assembled. Now, step number three is putting everything that you have onto your timeline and then cutting out all the fluff. This is very important that you are very critical with what you leave in the video and what you don't because a good editor is not necessarily someone who knows, you know, all the most fancy effects and all of that stuff. It's someone who knows what to keep in the video and what can be left out. You want to make sure that again, anything that you are repeating too many times or that can be boring to the viewer are ideally cut out and try to get down the length of the video to as little as possible while still getting all the information or entertainment across to the viewer. Step number four is adding some music to your video. This is a very important step because, you know, background music, it really adds a lot to how the video feels as a whole. It adds a lot to the pacing. So it is a crucial step and you want to use this to your advantage. And that actually brings us to the sponsor of this video, Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is a restriction-free music platform where you can get all of your sound effects from and also all of your music from for your videos. Now, the reason why this is important is because if you are not using restriction-free music in your videos, then you are not only going to get demonetized, but sometimes your videos can also get flagged or even taken down on YouTube. I have been using Epidemic Sound for over five years at this point for pretty much all of my personal projects and client projects as well. And I can always find the music there, which really just fits the vibe that I'm trying to create in my videos. They have a huge catalog of different songs. They have over 40,000 sound effects and over 90,000 songs, which is insane. And they keep adding new songs and sound effects to it every single week. It's neatly organized into different playlists and folders, and you can also use their advanced search options. Uh, they also have an AI feature now, which is in their Premiere Pro plugin, which can literally analyze your clip and give you song suggestions based on that. So they have a really amazing software and platform. And if you want to, you can actually try it out for a seven day free trial in the description below. So again, thank you Epidemics for sponsoring this video. And let's get back into it. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when it comes to using music in your videos is you want to make sure that it is not too loud. One of the most distracting things can be if your song is just super loud and it's overpowering your voice and also try to avoid songs with uh, vocals in it because that can also be distracting if you're talking to the camera and the viewer can also hear some singing in the background. Now, step number five is adding supplemental elements to your video. So this can be things like B-roll to kind of show the thing that you are talking about on the screen. And you can get these from different royalty-free uh, stock footage websites or even YouTube. You can also use texts 
to explain what you are doing better, right? So you can pop up little text effects here and there. Um, you can even add some captions throughout some parts of the video to just really, again, emphasize the things that you are saying, or you can even pop up images to explain it, icons, whatever it is, right? You wanna add these little extra things to just make your video that much more engaging. But keep in mind that the goal of B-roll and you know all of these different things is not necessarily just to make your video look better. The main purpose is to get the story and the content across to the viewer better. So you should only include something in my opinion, if it's actually going to enhance the viewing experience by either again, getting the story across better or making the video more entertaining while still getting the point across. I see a lot of people who just add in a bunch of effects here and there, they zoom in, zoom out, do all of this crazy stuff when they really shouldn't be at that part of the video. So that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes less is more. I know it's exciting when you start learning all of these effects because you just want to use them all of the time, but try to only use them when it really adds to your story and doesn't take away from it. Step number six is adding sound effects to your video. Now, the reason why this is so important is because if you already added some B-roll clips to your video, some text pop-ups, maybe some transitions even, or different effects, if you add some sound effects to go with it, it's going to make your video just feel that much more rich and uh, more alive, right? So if you, you know, let's say I pop up a B-roll clip right now of a fireplace, you know, that if you just look at it, yeah, you can get the point I'm talking about fireplace, but if I add some sound effects to it as well, well now you can feel how much more alive that feels make sure that you are using some sound effects and again you can use epidemic sound like i've been using and they have an incredible library of sound effects then step number seven is color correcting and color grading. Color correcting is when you just really get your video to look like how it should in terms of its exposure, contrast, and all of that. Uh, that really only applies if you have used like a flat picture profile to shoot your video or whatever. Ideally, you know, if you're a beginner, you probably shouldn't really be using those. Just use, uh, you know, the regular settings of your camera. And as long as it's exposed well, so your video is not overexposed or underexposed, it should be fine. And then the color grading part is where you can really get a bit more creative. So color grading is, you know, a technique uh, used in films and even YouTube videos to make the viewer feel some type of way. So color grading can almost be looked at like using different filters on Instagram. Obviously, this is like a very dumbed down way to say it. And probably someone who's like a professional editor would hate me for saying this. But again, make sure that it's just a very small amount. You don't want to have too strong of color grading in your video because again, that can just look a bit tacky and just overdone. You know that you have done just the right amount of color grading when the viewer doesn't really notice it that you have color grading on the video unless they specifically look for it because that means that it's a nice and natural look and you're all good to go. Then step number eight is watching your video back and looking for any mistakes. Now, this is a crucial part as well. There's nothing more embarrassing than uploading a video and then later on realizing that you have left in a bunch of mistakes, maybe some offline media screens, maybe you left in some mistakes you forgot to cut out. Because again, it can be very embarrassing and just ruin an overall professional video. Then step number nine is go through a pre-exporting checklist. Now I'm going to leave a pre-exporting checklist for you in the description of this video. So basically with that, you are going to be able to just look at some of the most common mistakes that beginner editors make and kind of like check them off, make sure you haven't made any of those in your video, just so you can be, you know, rest assured that your video is destined to do as well as it can possibly do. And then step number 10 is actually exporting your project. So this is also an important part. You want to make sure you're using the right formatting for your exports. You're using the right resolution and the right frame rate. So I've already covered this in a previous video of mine. So I'm going to leave that in the description of this video. You can also find a bunch of tutorials on how to export your videos in whatever editing software that you're using personally. So that shouldn't really be that hard to figure out, but it's something you still want to pay attention to. So that's it. These are the 10 steps I go through to edit my YouTube videos and edit videos for my clients as well. So just to recap everything, first, organization, second, starting a new project and importing all the footage in there, third, adding it to the timeline, cutting out all sort of mistakes, pauses, just trimming the fat. Step number four, adding music to the video. Step number five, adding any supplemental elements to your video to tell your story better. Step number six, adding sound effects to your video. Step number seven, color grading and color correcting if needed. Step number eight, 
watching back your video for any mistakes. Step number nine, going through a pre-export editing checklist to make sure you haven't made any of the most common mistakes. And step number 10, exporting your video with the right settings. If you have done all 10 of these, you have a pretty good chance that you have made an almost perfect edit. Now, obviously there's always room for improvement. You can always become a better editor uh, and I'm still nowhere near a perfect editor, right? I have such a long way to go to improve and get better as well. If you want to learn more about video editing, check out my Academy video editors that I owe in the description. And if you want to make money from editing videos for other people, then check out our coaching company, Grow Creatives. Other than that, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some value from it and I will see you in the next one.